So I'm not going to look at the camera, I'm just going to look at the road and I'm going to talk and you'll have to figure that one out, yeah? So I bought this Vivaro van, Vauxhall Vivaro van, just over a year ago now and I figured rather than doing a review on it when I first got it I would wait till I'd had it a while because I think that a little bit of experience of driving is a valuable thing. So after a year, I now want to tell you what I think of the van. Now when I bought it, I had a Mercedes Vito before that and I had it for quite a long time. To be honest, I had quite a few problems with it, computer based things and turbo and all sorts of things. So it ended up, I think I probably spent about 5,000 pounds on that van over the course of just over 10 years so that's all right you know i suppose that's not excessive but five thousand pounds i'd rather have not spent so i was looking for something reliable so when i looked at the Vauxhall vivaro one thing that i was really keen to get was a blue tech euro 6 compliant engine and they hadn't actually started making them Vauxhall, when i wanted this van so i hung on and i waited till that euro 6 Bluetech engine came out because I feel a bit guilty about the diesel issue as a lot of people do I know the sales of diesel have gone down but with vans and lorries and things like that there's no realistic way out because petrol is just prohibitive but if you've got the Euro 6 you're adding that Bluetech it is at least doing everything you can to lower the the, the emissions in the, the you know the harmful stuff basically the soot that's what it's doing, it's cleaning up the soot in that exhaust pipe so you don't get that black crap coming out the back of it. So that was my first overriding thing was to get the Euro 6 engine. To tell you the truth, Vauxhall were a bit late coming to the party with that. You know, people like Mercedes, Mercedes had had it for quite a while and uh, Vauxhall waited really until the last minute before they introduced it. So when I got it and I sold the Mercedes, I found the Mercedes battery was flat so I called the ROC guy to jump start it for me and he said to me, I told him I was selling it and that I just bought this and he looked at this and he went, you're selling a Mercedes and you're buying that Vauxhall and I went yeah and he just kind of raised his eyes to heaven and I went why, what's wrong and he went well he said, I've had a few problems with those. I've been to a few calls on those Vauxhalls. I went, oh, now you tell me. That's information I could have done with before I bought it. And I said, what was up? And he said, it's the clutches. He said, even on vehicles which had only done about three or 4,000 miles, they got this clutch failure problem. And he'd been out to three. So they towed three in, basically. Recovered three. And I thought, that's not good, is it, you know? I said, well, I've done it now anyway. I'm going to keep with it. You know, I bought it. And uh, then I started reading up on it and I th found that they did have a problem with the clutch. There was a seal on the clutch uh, in an O-ring or something like that, which was failing. And in this vehicle, the later ones, they solved the problem. So you figure, well, okay, problem solved is... <laughs> anyway since i've had this vehicle i've had two recalls on it for other things that they found so it just shows all the time they're at this cutting edge one of them interestingly was a mapping issue so just like volkswagen and everybody else the emissions weren't coming out quite as they intended and Vauxhall called that a mistake uh, i don't think they were trying to cook the books i don't think they were trying to produce figures which were unrealistic but some of the engines weren't giving the low emissions that they promised so it was remapped and there was another thing with the turbo where there was a rubber hose which was failing and they were finding that vehicles were breaking down so both of those things were fixed very nice people at the Vauxhall main dealers so I was quite happy about that so I've had it and I've done some long journeys in it and a lot of short journeys now the thing about the Bluetech engine you add the additive to the Bluetech engine uh, not, not to the engine, there's a special place for it to go. So you get a big drum of that additive 
and you pour it in there and it lasts for about 3,000 miles and then a little light comes up saying time to put some more blue tech in there and um, what I was told by the Vauxhall main dealer is if you're doing a lot of short journeys keep the revs high keep the engine warm because that blue tech sprays out into a hot exhaust pipe and if the exhaust pipe is cold then that blue tech is spraying on a cold exhaust and it clogs up the filters or something so you then get the limp home mode where it suddenly goes into a restricted thing and you've got to take the thing to uh, a main dealer to have that fixed and that's not under the warranty by the way that that thing so if you need to have that filter replaced it's down to you so he said to me short journeys keep keep the revs high so you keep the engine temperature up and you'll be all right so that's what I've tended to do in other words not go up into sixth gear keep it down into fourth gear and uh, just deal with that problem so it's been fine but he said the other thing is if you do find that it's starting to come up take it for a run on a motorway don't uh, just go around the houses take it for a good fast 70 mile an hour run for about half an hour he said and that will clean it out and you'll be all right so what have we got I went for the dual cab because I wanted the extra capacity to take people around but I also wanted the bulkhead on my old Vita I had the dual cab but I didn't have the bulkhead and it meant that all the rubbish that I put in the back all the cement and the bricks and everything else all the dust was coming through into the cab and I was forever having to clean the dust and I tell you the truth it was making me cough so now I keep the rubbish in the back I keep the people in the front and I try to keep it tidy as you do with vehicles and one of the things I do now is to brush down before I get into the vehicle because I used to just finish hacking up concrete jumped into the cab and wondering why it got so dusty in there so little thing but anyway that's nothing to do with the vehicle the vehicle has an eco mode now I keep this eco mode on all the time if you switch it off you can feel the performance increase slightly but in order to get the best economy out of the engine I keep the eco mode on so I was getting as a combined thing of motorway and round the houses you know urban cycle I was getting about 39 miles per gallon if you're uh, on the continent you can convert that to kilometers but 39 miles per gallon I thought was pretty good for a van of this size this is a long wheelbase van then I fitted the roof rack I got myself a Vanguard roof rack which is made to measure nice roof rack and that MPG went down to 37 so having that roof rack on is costing me two miles per gallon which is not great but what are you gonna do I need to carry ladders I need to carry 8x4 sheets and things like that and having this crew cab means I can't get an 8x4 sheet in the back I've got roughly just under two meters say six foot of of load space lengthwise in there so not enough to get a sheet of plasterboard on but with the roof rack I can cope I can do it and the other thing is I try to get more deliveries these days than I used to I was always nipping down to the merchants picking bits up so I don't have to do that so much anymore so we've got the eco we've also got cruise control which I've never had before so that's quite nice when I'm doing the runs as I'm doing now going up to Harrogate you know 250 miles we can get cruise control on there it's also got a speed limiter so if you find yourself creeping over the 70 mile an hour limit and you're worried about you know things like um, the, the cameras they have on the motorways now which give you average speed over a long distance and you find it's creeping up to 80 you can flick that speed limiter on and it will keep you down to 70 I think if you need it you can kind of boot through it so if you found yourself in a situation where you had to accelerate hard if you just floor it if you put your foot hard down it will override that and it will also override the eco setting for a few seconds just to get you out of trouble but for the most part I'm a fairly steady old driver now being an old geezer you know I'm not like I was when I was young I don't tear about quite so much we've got another little thing on here which amuses me which is a little indicator that tells you when to change gear so if you if you don't know when to change gear then you probably haven't been driving very long but I suppose it just gives you the optimum performance so if you see it going up like now if I slow down I'm in sixth gear and it's telling me to change down one so 
useful I guess if you need that kind of thing um, what else can I tell you um, I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with the comfort level in it I think it's good when people sell vans and they say drives like a car I don't like driving cars I've always driven vans I've never owned a car my wife owns cars but I have always had vans and I'm quite happy with that upright position in a van and I like my steering wheel to be slightly laid over more like a lorry I don't like it upright as you get in the car so for me if they move these things far too far towards a car I'm unhappy but anyway it drives like a van to me but a very nice van it's also got another interesting little thing on it in that it does some kind of computer controlled uh, traction so if you were trying to oversteer around the corner it would correct it and if the weight in the van lurches over it will correct that all very sophisticated and you think that kind of thing you got that on high-end vehicles like the Mercedes and don't forget the Mercedes is about over 10,000 quid more than this vehicle so to get that level of sophistication on a vehicle like this is good so that's as much as I can tell you really about it the only thing that I really hate about this vehicle is that if you close the back doors in the wrong sequence, like you're not thinking, you've got your tools out and you just flick the door closed, and if you do it the wrong way round, in other words, if you close the left hand one, before the right hand one, what it's done is it's dented the door. When that one closes onto the other one, it makes a dent and it really made me angry because I like keeping my van nice I don't like getting scratches on it and if I get any kind of damage I want to get it repaired straight away so close that door put a little dent on the back door and I thought oh no you stupid idiot and I'm looking at getting that dent taken out but I don't know how to solve the problem of that dent coming back again because if I do that again it's going to come back so you've got to engage your brain now interestingly when I took this vehicle in for those little things that I spoke about, the recalls at the Vauxhall main dealer, I noticed a few other vans in the car park and I had a look at them, but all but one of those vehicles had got the same problem, got a little dent in the door where somebody had done what I'd done. So it's a problem, it's a design fault, it's annoying, it's not the end of the world, but I wish they'd come up with a nice little rubber bumper or something that would protect the vehicle what I did is I put a little plastic strip on the back that has since fallen off so I'm gonna to have to do something because I don't want any more dents in it if I carry on doing that you know then it's gonna look rubbish so I hope you found that interesting and useful we've got a few miles to go we're gonna be doing as I say 230 miles now long into the evening and I'm gonna switch the radio on put the cru cruise control on and relax so I'm Roger Bisbee, I hope you found that interesting and useful. We don't normally do van reviews on Skill Builder, but we're quite happy to do them. If anybody wants to send us in a van off their press fleet for us to review, we'd be more than happy to do it. So come back soon, don't forget to subscribe. Lots more coming up on Skill Builder, and who knows, we might do a few more van reviews. 